안녕하십니까 김경원입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Kyung Won. Let's look at the patient of the day for today's surgery. This is a 65-year-old male patient, actually. I've introduced this patient previously. At the time, if you take a look over here, this initial visit at April 2021 in number 25, the tooth was fractured. At the time, in June, I removed the root breast and uh, using the sinus floor, immediate implant placement was done. There was 2 millimeter gap in between with the buccal wall. Sure-Os was used to do socket graft. You can see that final prosthesis has been delivered in October 2021. In January 2022, the patient came in complaining of the upper right premolar area number 15. There was gingival swelling and pus. The two teeth were connected as bridge. If you take a closer look at the periapical image, there was periapical abscess. Number 15 and 16, they were connected in a bridge form, therefore there was no mobility. If you look at CT, buccal wall is completely destroyed and there's a bit of destruction in the palatal side as well. In the case of this patient, the patient did have diabetes, but it was under control. In number 25 and 16, I removed the bridge. And on the other side, in the case of number 25, immediate implant placement was done. And sure, os graft was used to for socket graft. In this case, buccal wall was completely destroyed. Therefore, AOS collagen and os guide was used for socket preservation. And in number 15 implant was to be placed using one guide. This is CT at the time of patient visit in January. In number 15, buccal wall is completely destroyed. Along with apical lesion, palatal wall is destroyed. So there is a very little wall left. It is difficult to do immediate implant placement in this case because the buccal wall is completely gone. Socket preservation was planned. The bridge was removed. Number six, number five, endodontic treatment was not done. Number five was extracted. AS collagen and OS guide was used. Suture was done. Socket preservation was done. On the palatal side, there's a bit of swelling and a pus. Suction was done. Curettage was done. I did not do the endodontic treatment myself, my colleague did, therefore the x-ray follow-up is not well reflected here. This is intraoral image after one month since socket preservation. This is four months after socket preservation and number 16 endodontic treatment was done, crown was delivered. After four months, in the area where socket preservation was done, the buccal wall was lost significantly and palatal wall was destroyed as well. AOS collagen was used to maintain the ridge. Surgery preparations were made. After consulting with one guided team, TS3 soy implant was to be used because there was a very little buccal wall left. 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant was planned. I did not puncture the sinus floor, but using the cortical bone in the sinus floor, stability was gained. This was how the surgery was planned and conducted. Implant was placed on top of bone graft was done. Because there was no buccal wall, additional bone graft was planned. This is immediate post-op image. TS3 soy surface, a 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. At the time, the ISQ was 73-76. It was comparatively favorable. This is immediate post-op CT image. In the area where socket preservation was done, additional bone graft was done. This is a January this year, 
Saka preservation was done. This is after four months. In the video that I'm going to show you, number 15, the Balkal wall and Paltal wall were destroyed. Aos cauldron was used. Saka preservation was done. TS3 soy implant was placed in number 25. Root rest was removed. And at the time I used, the KS implant was used. Immediate implant placement was done. And for the socket gap, sure, us allogenic bone was used for bone graft. The two sides look similar, but actually they're quite different and they're in contrast with each other. Prosthesis has been delivered to number 15. ER type prosthesis was delivered. AOS collagen socket preservation was done. Additional bone graft was done, but you can see that bone graft material is not fully consolidated. It is well maintained. In the case of number 25, it's been about one year and one month since surgery and as mentioned, immediate implant placement was done and in the socket gap, allogenic bone was used for bone graft and you can see that buccal bone is well maintained even after one year and one month and you can see that there has been no major problem. Now I'm going to show you the surgical clip. One guy template is being adapted. Tissue punch is used to remove the mucosa. One guy template is removed. Soft tissue is fully removed. One guy the template is adapted once again. First, the flattening drill is used to flatten the bone. I've used a soft initial drill. Socket preservation was done and there was no buckle wall, therefore initial drill for soft bone was used. Next, it is 3.5 by 10 millimeter one guide drill. The bone was still soft, therefore 4.0 by 10 millimeter drill was used as final drill. Four point zero by ten millimeter drill. I'm only drilling up to four point zero and after that implant was placed a TS3 implant, soy surface. 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant is placed. Because it is soy implant, I am not irrigating the implant. I'm using the engine by 80%. I'm making sure that the stent does not move. A hand wrench is used to get the final position. Primary stability is over 30 newton centimeter. I'm checking the final position. The depth control is done. This is how the surgery was complete. Using smart peg, I checked the IS cube value. IS cube value was 73 and 76 because after drilling was done, it was quite favorable. In order to do additional bone graft, I made minor incision on the buccal side. Because this is an area where socket preservation was done, in order to maintain buccal wall, you need to sufficiently graft a os. Therefore, on the buccal side, the flap was slightly elevated. Before doing bone graft, I'm connecting healing abutment. I'm making sure that the graft material does not go to the inner surface. On the buckle side, I'm using sufficient amount of AOS 
for bone graft. Because we want to be sure that the buccal wall will be maintained, osguide is used, membrane is covered. On the buccal side, additional bone graft was done, therefore soft tissue is a bit lacking. I make a periosteal releasing incision so that the flap is repositioned sufficiently. Because tissue punch was used, the suture was done next to healing apartment as shown. Mesial tooth was used for anchor suture. Flap was pulled. This was how suture was done. The surgery itself, it was not really problematic because I used uh, one guide before extraction. There were severe destruction of buccal wall and there were destructions in the palatal side as well. AS collagen was used for socket preservation. In order to make buccal wall more staunch, AOS was used for additional bone graft. That was how the case was closed. As shown, it's quite different. It's stark contrast from the other side. On the other side, there was still buccal wall and root rest was removed. Immediate implant placement was done. Allogenic bone was used to, f to fill the gap. In the case of the other side, AOS collagen was used to do socket preservation to restore the destroyed buccal bone. Thank you for watching.